This video shows you how to use an astrolabe, like the laser cut astrolabes mentioned in the description of this video. I, I have two different size astrolabes in my GitHub page. I have a large astrolabe and a small one. The printing on the large one is a little simpler because I did it before and the star chart on the smaller one is a little simplified and the stars are labeled. That way, if you're not familiar with where the stars are in the sky, it makes it a little easier to find them. I'm going to show you how to use the astrolabe during the daytime so the stars aren't that important because there's only one star that's visible. That's the sun. Of course, that star has the disadvantage that it moves around over the course of the year and the astrolabe helps compensate for that. I'll demonstrate on the large astrolabe just because it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. So right now it's in the morning and the sun is visible and you, as you can see by the lighting on me there's a lot of sun available and you have a clear view of the sun. So in order to start out you need to take a sighting of the elevation of the sun. To do that you use the back of the astrolabe that's not the portion with the clear plastic front that has the star printed on it. So use the back, and around the outer edge is an elevation scale. I've set this up so that you hold in your right hand, let the astrolabe dangle from the ring, and you take a sighting by aligning this pointer with the sun. Now, with most stars, you can look down the pointer, but with the sun, you can damage your eyes. So don't, don't look down the pointer. Instead, allow the sunlight to fall across the pointer and make a shadow on something. So I'm going to come up close and show you the pointer has two little wings and what you do is you align those two little wings so that they're right on top of each other. So if you can see right there those two little wings have two little shadows and they're right on top of each other, right aligned. That's how you know that we're taking a sighting of exactly what the elevation of the sun is. Now, if you read that, you can read that that looks like it's about 26 degrees. So the sun right now is about 26 degrees of elevation into the sky. Now, flip over the astrolabe. And what you need to do is you need to know what day of the year it is. Today is March 18th. And if you look around the edge of the clear plastic, there's a calendar. On the large astrolabe, just the initials of each month are listed. So around J for January, F for February, March, April, May, June, July, and so on. Today's March 18th. So you turn the pointer, take the flat edge of the pointer, make sure you're using the correct edge. The flat edge goes through the center screw. You turn that to March 18th. So here's 5, 10, 15, there's 20, so back to, that's 18. Now you look then, where is the sun in the sky? You look then where this line intersects the offset circle. The offset circle shows the apparent orbit of the sun through the sky. So the sun is located there. Now we need to turn this whole assembly to match up with the elevation sighting we just took, which was 26 degrees. So let's turn it so that it's 26 degrees. Now where are the elevation contours? Well, the elevation contours are printed on the black. They're on the back. These circles emanating from this point, this point is directly overhead, the zenith, and this point here is the north star. So we turn it so that that intersection point at March 18th, it's 26 degrees. So right there is zero degrees. There's 10 degrees, and at least if you use the default printing on GitHub, the large astrolabe has elevation contours every two degrees. So there's 20, that would be 30, and I'm going to back it off four. I'm backing it off four, and that's now where the sun is located in the sky. So you can take a few things off of this. First of all, the sun is located right there, so the intersection of the March 18th line with the offset circle, 26 degrees up. Now, if you read right off there, on the outer ring, so the ring just outside the plastic, you can see that it says 820-ish. That 820-ish is actually 820 a.m. local time. Now, in fact, right now we're using daylight savings time, so it puts it at about 920. Now, the sun, unfortunately, 
is not exactly the center of a circular orbit for the Earth. The Earth has an elliptical orbit, and so this would be exactly where the, what, what time it would be if the, if the Earth had an elliptical orbit, and the Earth's orbit wasn't inclined. Both of these effects make you need to compensate for that to get the time that you'd read on your clock. To see that, flip over the astrolabe and look on the back again. And there is this sort of kidney bean shaped curve. That kidney bean shaped curve is called the equation of time, and it helps fix up the problem that sun time is not the same as clock time. Again, there's another calendar, January, February, March. Let's go to March 5, 10, 15, 18, and read off. Every one of these circles is, is a ring of two, two, four, six, back up, eight, 10. So that, that says the sun is 10 minutes slow. So that means if we offset by about 10 minutes, we'll put it at about 840 or so. And in fact, if I check my clock, it should say 940, remember in daylight savings time, it's about 950. Within 10 minutes is certainly well within the accuracy of the kind of sighting we're taking. Now, there's another thing you can measure off of this. This outer ring is a compass. You can see it says north, south, east, and west. How do I know where the sun is located? Well, the sun is there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to read off of this line here, going through the North Star, through the zenith, to the top of the astrolabe. That straight line on the back is 180 degrees. And then there are 10 degrees, if you use the default printing, azimuth contours. So that's 180, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 25. So at 125 degrees, that's where the sun is located. If I turn now to put the sun at 125 degrees, now putting down the astrolabe, this is actually a true north oriented compass. These are just some of the things you can do with, with an astrolabe. It's kind of like the medieval equivalent of a smartphone. Thank you for watching my video.